Hey everyone and welcome back to Hoffman Engineering. Today we are taking a look at Creality's latest 3D scanner, the CR Scan Otter. This handheld 3D scanner claims an innovative forward lens system for scanning both small to large objects, as well as the ability to scan black and reflective objects, something that other handheld scanners struggle to capture. But does the CR Scan Otter live up to those claims? Let's find out. Before we begin, this CR Scan Otter was sent to me for review by SaneSmart, a leading retailer of CNC, 3D printing, scanning, and other maker-related tools and electronics. As with all of my reviews, Reviews, they aren't paying me for this review, and they won't see this video before it is published. And everything I say is my own honest opinion after using this scanner for the last month. Let's get into it. The CR Scan Otter is a handheld, full-color 3D scanner designed to scan small to large objects. It has a unique four-lens system, with two lenses with a long focal length for small detailed objects, and the other two lenses with short focal lengths for larger objects. This gives the Otter a range of scanning sizes, with the spec sheet showing 10 cubic millimeters to 2 cubic meters. The Otter is an infrared structured light scanner, with an infrared projector in the center that shines a set of light patterns onto the objects being scanned. The sensors detect how these patterns lay on a surface of the object, and use that to determine depth information from it. In addition to the main projector and four sensors, there is a color RGB camera and two white LEDs to capture texture colors, making this a full colored scanner. The last feature on the front are eight infrared LEDs that are used to track marker stickers, which I'll talk about more in a bit. Around the back of the scanner is the USB 3.0. Type-C ports to connect to your computer, and has a nice locking mechanism so the cable won't become unplugged from the scanner. And don't worry, the Otter comes with adapters needed to convert the Type-A port on the cable to Type-C if your computer needs it. Also on the back are handy touch controls for starting or stopping a scan, and for increasing or decreasing the exposure. Finally, at the bottom of the scanner is a quarter 20 mount for a handle or tripod, but one is not included with the CR Scan Otter. It comes in a very nice, hard carrying case. The bottom section holds the scanner, USB cables, and a sample owl statue. The top section contains the USB adapters, a carrying strap, a full color manual in English and Chinese, a scanning mat, and a calibration board. The Otter is certified as a class 1 laser, meaning that it is eye safe and safe for scanning faces and bodies. The use of infrared sensors also allow it to scan dark and black objects. Those often give structured light scanners problems. Reflective and transparent objects are still a problem though, and you'll need a scanning spray, or a homemade solution like dry shampoo, in order to scan those. Scanning is done through the Creality Scan software, available for Mac and Windows. Creality has plans for a wireless connection which will enable mobile scanning on Android and iOS, but that is not available yet. After connecting the CR Scan Otter to your computer via USB, you can use the software to scan, process, and export your scans. I found the software relatively easy to use. There is an initial tutorial to get you started. I am happy with the ease of scanning. The interface gives you all the information you need. There is a nice histogram that shows you if you need to move closer to the object or further away. Once you are the correct distance, you can start the scan, either through the software or by pressing the start button on the scanner itself. As you move the scanner, or the turntable, the scan points turn from red to green. Once most of the model is green, then you've completed your scan. If you move too fast, the scanner might lose tracking. In that case, simply move back to a location that you've scanned already, and the software will detect and resume right there. I found it does an excellent job with resuming tracking, even if I move to a completely different side from where it lost tracking. Obviously, the scanner can only capture what it sees. So, to do a full scan, you will often need to flip your object and scan from multiple angles. Creality Scan makes it easy to add and combine multiple scans. If two scans share a lot of features, then the software can automatically align. Sometimes, you might need to manually align the scans by selecting common points though. Once you've captured data from all the angles, you can remove any extra points using the select tools and deleting those points. Once you are happy with the scans, you'll need to process the data. There's a one-click processing button which will handle it all automatically, or you can manually adjust the settings like mesh density and denoising. Processing can be slow, depending on your computer's hardware and whether you have fast or high quality mode enabled. With high quality, it can often take 5 to 10 minutes to fully process the scan, with larger objects taking longer to process. Fast scan seems to half that processing time. The end results are pretty impressive though. You can switch between seeing the point cloud, the resulting mesh, and the final colored texture object. You can export the process data in a variety of formats, including a .stl, .obj, or .ply. Here are some of my test scans. The sample owl shows off the detail of the scanner, as well as the great color texture mapping. Since it is included with a scanner, you'd expect this object to be the best case scenario for the otter, and it did not disappoint. This 3D printed octopus has many details in all of the arm joints. The post-processing did want to combine a few of the arms, but I attribute that to the fact that I could not move this object without moving the arms, so I could not capture the underside of it. For a single scan from just this angle though, this was a pretty good result. You can even see the layer lines near the top of the head. 
This skull is probably the most difficult scan that I tested. The extremely small holes are a worst case scenario for this scanner. The otter had a hard time detecting the translucent green filaments. It could not keep tracking, and it did not really work with this object. In contrast, the Kerbal was an amazingly easy scan. It did a great job detecting all the different materials and textures, and it captured the black painted areas perfectly. Another test of blacks is this Vault Boy figure. The black of the eyes and the shoes posed no issues for the otter. Beautiful scan. To really test out the tracking, this Veronoi Bulbasaur was a very difficult scan. It had failed with many of my other previous scanner reviews. However, the otter handled it perfectly. I was very impressed by the results. It had no issues tracking the object, and the post-processing was able to correctly make the model watertight. Very good results. To test the 10 cubic millimeter claim, I tried scanning this D&D miniature. It was a very tough scan, an extremely small object with some transparent pieces. While I was able to capture a few of the angles, aligning them was difficult and it had to be done manually. And I must have messed it up, because the final results weren't aligned correctly. However, there is no undo button for aligning. Once you leave the screen, you can't go back. I would say that this figure would be the smallest that I would try to scan. The advertised 10 cubic millimeters should be more like 25 cubic millimeters. Still quite small, but don't expect to capture a pencil lead sculptures with the otter. This dragon is one of the larger 3D prints that I scanned, and again, it turned out great. It was easy to scan, rarely lost tracking, and handled the complex occlusion of the wings and the tails without issues. This Master Chief helmet was another story. It was tough to scan. Neither the feature mode nor the texture mode worked well for scanning. It was consistently losing track while scanning the relatively flat and single-colored parts of the helmet and it could not figure out the inside of the helmet. The gray foam padding was giving issues. I was surprised with how well it handled the mirrored visor though. I didn't use any matte scanning spray and it still figured out the visor, so mixed results here. The gold lion was great for texture scanning. Even though the gold was reflective, the otter was able to complete the scan with little issues. It performed better than many of my other scanners on this object. The Stadia controller was a great example of the detail that the otter could achieve. It picked up the USB-C port on the back and the seams between the front and the back panels. The texture mapping made some of the black buttons bleed into the white a little, but overall the scanning was smooth and accurate. The PS4 controller put the black scanning to the test. It turned out perfectly. I'm extremely impressed by the performance here. You can tell the Otter struggled a little bit more on the black surfaces. Tracking was a little harder to keep compared to the Stadia controller. However, the results are amazing. The 3D mesh is spot on and the texture mapping is equally good. Finally, let's look at scanning people. Thank you to Mrs. Hoffman Engineering for being my model today. The face scan picks up the fine facial features but this mode does not handle hair well. I was surprised with how close it wanted the scanner to be from her face. You might want to warn your subjects first. Face mode would be perfect for putting faces onto virtual characters, however. The body mode handles hair much better. The otter is able to capture a full body scan, and it took two revolutions of my homemade turntable to get a full scan. The texture mapping is also able to pick up details such as tattoos and accessories. The processing time is pretty long on full body scans. It can take upwards of 10 minutes to process on my laptop with a dedicated NVIDIA RTX 3050 graphics card. The body scans turned out great though. The Otter did a good job with both detail and ease of scanning. So let's talk about some issues I ran into. I had a major issue when I first connected the scanner to Creality Scan. It said I needed a firmware upgrade before I could continue, but it failed to complete the upgrade. No matter what I did, it could not complete. And during this time, Creality did not have the CR Scan Otter firmware available on their wiki. In my haste, I downgraded my version of Creality Scan, not knowing that version 2 only works with the CR Scan Ferret, and running the firmware upgrade from there resulted in the software thinking that my scanner was a CR Scan Ferret. I thought I had bricked my scanner. However, thanks to some helpful members on the Creality Scan Facebook group, I was able to get the correct firmware and figure out that I needed to unplug my bricked scanner during the firmware upgrade in order to force the bootloader to be active and accept the new firmware. This should not be an issue for you. Since then, Creality has published the Otter firmware on their wiki page, and it has been consistently upgrading the Creality Scan software to make it easier to update the firmware. But if you are the one in the million user who happens to put the wrong firmware on their scanner and get stuck like me, well, maybe this will help you. I had no issues with additional firmware upgrades and Creality Scan updates since then. In conclusion, the CR Scan Otter is a very impressive handheld scanner. I had a great result from both small and large objects, and the dual lens system does its job to capture both larger objects and those finer details. The finished watertight meshes are certainly suitable for 3D printing, and the detailed full-color texture maps make for great digital assets. The Creality Scan software was easy to learn and works decently well, even though processing is a tad on the slower side. 
All of the expected features are here for cleaning up the scan data, aligning multiple scans, creating a mesh, closing holes, and applying the final textures. And the software handled the tougher cases, like the complex Veronoi Bulbasaur, much better than some of the other software that I've tested. The black scanning also worked much better than expected. The CR Scan Otter sells for $899 US dollars at the time of this video. This puts it on the slightly more expensive side of the handheld scanners on the market. However, the Otter was able to capture details that rivaled some of the turntable scanners that are double its price. If you are looking for a versatile handheld scanner for action figure size objects and larger, then I would certainly recommend the CR Scan Otter. So thank you all for watching my review of the Creality CR Scan Otter handheld scanner. What was your favorite feature of the Otter? What do you think was missing? Is there anything that you wish that I had covered in this review? Let me know in the comments below. And if you are still in the market for 3D scanners, check out my other review, like the review of this Mole 3D scanner. It might be just what you're looking for. So thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all next time.